Welcome back to Miami. Tonight's installment of our series on the first 100 days of the Trump administration focuses on energy and infrastructure. Donald Trump's election is providing hope to areas of the country that have lost much of their way of life because of changing attitudes about coal and green energy. National correspondent William Lachanes takes us to one of those places tonight. Fire. It's not just uh, the coal itself, it's the downstream value of that to our economy, to our people, to our community. Hotchkiss, Colorado calls itself the friendliest town around. It's anything but for the coal industry. In this area of western Colorado, there were three coal mines. Now there is only one. But coal isn't the only casualty. You're also killing a community. Well, this is empty. Yeah, this used to be a quilt store. And this is Pastime's Friendly Tavern. It closed just this year. Mayor Wendell Kuhn saw 1,200 jobs disappear in one year. For every one job at the mine, they estimate there's five to seven jobs down valley. Coal provided 50% of U.S. electricity eight years ago. Today, 31% and falling. Is it market driven? Is it politics? And what does Donald Trump represent in that equation? It's probably a little bit of both. The shutdown of a lot of the coal-fired plants and the loss of market is due to regulations that have restricted emissions from coal-fired plants. So it, it is a combination of that and cheap natural gas. We're going to save that coal industry. Believe me, we're going to save it. President Trump promised to cut coal regulations, including the Clean Power Plan and the Paris Agreement, which dramatically restrict U.S. carbon emissions. It's tough on the community. Um, it's tough on the people at the mine. You know, you have friends that you work with for years that are no longer there. They don't know what to do. I mean, this is their livelihood. Think about it when you're 40, 50 years old. What do you do? Do you go back to college and say, okay, well, what do I want to be when I grow up? Under my presidency, we'll accomplish a complete American energy independence. Complete. To do that, Trump promises to open federal lands to oil and gas drilling and lift the effective ban on offshore drilling outside the Gulf of Mexico. I am excited and I am nervous at the same time because it's not going to be as easy as some people think. Why? Because Congressman Rob Bishop says opponents can still use the Endangered Species Act and the National Environmental Protection Act to stop energy development. The goal is to have abundant, affordable energy. That makes our economy grow. That includes alternative energy. Though Trump criticized wind and solar in the campaign, renewables now provide more than 30% of the power in 10 states. The cost of wind has come down 61% in the last six years. It's equal to or better than low-cost natural gas in the U.S. Steve Lockhart's company makes wind turbine blades in Iowa. We contribute $50 million a year just in payroll and direct uh, benefits to our employees. Because 600,000 now work in wind and solar, most expect Trump won't cut the production tax credit. His infrastructure plan also modernizes the power grid. While support for the North Dakota access and Keystone pipelines would move oil more cheaply. Looking at the president's trillion dollars over 10 years, uh, from a floor perspective, we think that's you know, a, a wonderful thing. Business and labor support his infrastructure plan. The challenge is building big projects without producing big deficits. It will be deficit neutral. Trump would essentially replace federal subsidies with tax breaks to induce private companies to invest their money. We had about 1,400 craft work on this job. That translated into another 7,500 jobs. In other projects, say road and rail, government can reduce its upfront costs by spreading the risk and sharing the reward or revenue stream, in this case from tolls, ticket sales, or fees. This is your treasure. And you, the American people, are entitled to share in the riches. Trump hopes to leverage federal money and tax policy to induce investment. But ultimately, projects and industries live or die only if they make money. In Hotchkiss, Colorado, William Lajeunesse, Fox News. Our 15-part series looking ahead to the first 100 days of the Trump presidency continues tomorrow with a look at the fate of the Iran nuclear deal.